Hey, Brian from Snake Bites here. As you guys know, it's been egg laying season, which means you've got to incubate your eggs. So we're going to spend this time talking about a whole bevy of different types of incubators, from cheap all the way up to walk-in incubators. You're watching Snake Bites. With the egg laying season in full tilt, obviously it's very important to incubate your python eggs. We're going to show you a whole bunch of different types of incubators that might fit your needs, whether you have one or two clutches or 20 or 30 clutches. But first, of course, you've got to have incubation medium. What that basically does is keep your eggs moist, but not too moist where they're going to go bad. I actually really like this hatch right because it actually has a water isomer already in it. You open the bag, you pour it into the box, and basically you put the eggs right in, stick them in the incubator and you're ready to go. It's really awesome, so check it out at hatchright.com. We're gonna go ahead and pull the clutch, get it into the hatchright, and show you guys a couple incubators. Right now what we have is actually a ball python here that's just done laying eggs. She's actually a het ghost bred to a pinstripe het ghost, so we're hoping for some, some ghost pinstripes out of this clutch. Again, I always just kind of slowly unwrap them. You can see there's actually a couple bad eggs. She's hissing a little bit, but she'll be okay. It's a few bagged eggs in here, but it's actually not that bad of a clutch. I'm always trying to get the eggs out as gently as I can. Oh, you can see she's striking there. You gotta be careful of that. All right, grab the last four eggs. Again, these guys here are just little slugs, so we'll just throw these in the garbage. We'll get the last eggs in the, the egg box, and then it's off to our first incubator. So now that I have my eggs, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the first incubator. This is actually a new product. It's pretty cool. It's called a Reptivator. It's by Zoomed. And as you can see, it's a pretty simple construction. You basically just have a styrofoam box here that has little grooves in the bottom to put water in. And then it actually has a foam top on it. So you can actually put your boxes on top of it as well as keep the water kind of dissipated in a good way. It has heat cable on the very top. That's what generates the heat. And what's really cool is it has a pretty cool little thermostat system here. Just a real simple up and down. You can set this to 88, 89 degrees, which is right where you want the pythons to be. And even has a little hydrometer on it to keep the humidity level. Basically, you put your water in there, you put your eggs in there, you set it, you put the top on, and you're basically set. It's a pretty nice incubator. It's only about 125 bucks. If you want to go up to an incubator that's a little bit more advanced and a little bit easier to work with, these Kemp's incubators are absolutely fantastic. This is actually the pro version, and what's neat about it is you can not only regulate the temperature, but you can also regulate the humidity. There's actually a little area here where you pour water in, you set the hydrometer, and it'll actually do whatever. If you want it 80%, it'll make it 80% or 90%, and you don't need a shoebox to put it in. You actually take your eggs right out of your box, and you put them right into the sky. You you set your temperature, you set your humidity, and you just basically put the lid right on it and you can actually see right in. If there's a downside to this, it's probably you're only going to fit maybe 12 or 15 eggs in this incubator as far as pythons go. Certainly a lot more with smaller snake eggs, but they do have a couple upgrades. The next version is about $500 and they actually have a cabinet where you can easily fit 20 or 30 clutches. That's about $1,700 and it's pretty cool. All right guys, it's Cal's question of the week. Now this show is all about incubation, and since we're on that topic, I gotta say that it's been extremely hot here in Michigan and humid. I feel like I'm in a damn incubator. We've had crazy weather, thunderstorms, we even had an earthquake, which is unheard of. I wanna know what's the most extreme weather you guys have experienced. Text or video comment below, let me know. You can also make homemade incubators, and there's several ways to do it, but I'm gonna show you the cheapest and most effective way. You get a tropical fish styro. You can get them at any tropical fish store. They'll usually give them to you for free. Just make sure that there's no cracks or holes in them and they're watertight. You get it back, and you're gonna to wanna to buy an underwater heater that's like an Ebo Jaeger or some brand like that that actually can be completely submerged in water. I don't have one, so I'm just gonna use this as a mock-up. This is a flashlight, but it's the same size as an underwater water heater. These guys actually adjust the temperature. What you want to do is put about three or four inches of water down in the bottom of your styro, submerge your heater that has the little adjuster in it, get it down there, give it two or three days and continue to adjust the temperature until you get it to the right temperature that you want. In this case, I'd want 88 or 89 for a python egg. Of course, you're not going to want to put an egg box right in the water. So what I normally do is take something like this, just some containers that you can put in here. You can even use bricks to make sure the water line is below that. And then you can actually set your egg box right on top of it 
and close the lid and basically you have a great homemade incubator for probably under $40. Getting into another homemade incubator are cabinet styled incubators. You can actually make them or you can use an old refrigerator to do the same way. Basically what we have here is styrofoam that's sandwiched with Luan so that it's got really high R value or very insulated and we actually put Formica on the inside so that the humidity stays really well. Basically what you have is a couple chicken heaters in here and then also some computer fans on the top and bottom to circulate the air. We actually have two chicken heaters, one up top and one on the bottom. The chicken coil heaters are actually hooked up to this Herbstat Pro thermostat. I personally like the Herbstat Pros the best but you can certainly use any Herbstat product or any product for that matter. The normal Herbstats are about 80 or 90 bucks. The pros go up to $300, $350, but have lots of bells and whistles on them with some backup redundancies and alarms, which I personally like. We have pull-out shelves in these guys so that when you have two deep in your shoe boxes, you can actually get to the back without having the first one pull out. Again, not a necessity. You can even go one deep if you want. Anyways, these homemade incubators are really nice, whether they're a refrigerator or a cabinet made one like this. This one here costs about $1,000 complete, and again, will hold 40 or 50 clutches. It's great for the next step up novice. Obviously, we produce a lot more clutches of pythons than a cabinet incubator can hold for us. So what's the next step size up? A walk-in incubator. I actually have one of those in the basement in my house. Let's go check it out. Here we are in my walk-in incubator. Any large-scale reptile breeder needs a big incubator like this. Those little incubators just don't hold enough eggs. This room can actually hold five to 600 clutches of ball pythons alone. It's just basically a big insulated room with really good shelves, really heavily insulated floors, walls, ceilings, the whole shot. We have a fan to circulate the air and a dimmer to control that circulation, an oil-filled heater for the heating element, and then a surge protector plugged in to make sure that you don't have any problems with lightning storms and so on like that, a really good thermostat, and we put probes all over the place with this amp probe thermometer. And then that way we can keep track of all the eggs all over the room. Again, we have a ton of eggs and if you're a big scale breeder, you need to have a walk-in incubator. This week's comment of the week on the So You Want to Know About Snakes episode, the question was, what's your craziest truth or dare story? And Tarzan 07330 said, My craziest truth or dare story took place on a dirt bike trip down to Wayne National Forest. My whole group of friends were dared to ride 10 miles of trails in just our underwear and shoes. It turned into our famous underwear run, which we do every time we go down there now. Good times in that forest. Oh yeah, the Wayne Forest underwear run. Who hasn't heard of that one? You guys keep sending me creative comments. I'm going to feature you on a future episode. Hey guys, I need you guys all over here. This Wonka ball is like probably the most exciting clutch that we're going to have this year. She can actually produce super chocolate Wonkas. She's overdue right now. She should be laying literally anytime you can see she's all nested up literally any time, but I've got to take off, guys, so as soon as she lays, you guys got to take care of the eggs. Give me a call or something like that, all right? Sounds good. Yeah. All right, cool. No problem. Dude, listen, this is our one shot, one opportunity. You in or out? I'm always in. Let's do this. Let's do this. <laughs> What's up? Hey, what's up dude? Can you go check on that Wonka ball? I haven't checked on it in a while, Brian, so keep a good eye on it, you know. Super, yeah. super important. I'd check right. on it right now. Alright, thanks, man. Alright. Dude, dude, hey, come on. It's go time, dude. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, no, so love me. Oh, you gotta be very careful with this. You know, he's gonna love me. I'm gonna be his favorite. Everybody's gonna be envious. I'm gonna be number one. Hand dog! Hand dog! Hand dog! Hand dog! Hand dog! The Wonka egg. Oh, yeah, that's fantastic, me. man. When did she lay? A little bit ago, I brought him straight to you. Are you kidding me? No, these are the Wonka Ball eggs. These are freaking chicken eggs, you idiot. <laughs> hey, head dog, head dog, look, I got Wonka Ball eggs! Oh, <laughs> oh, it's on. 
So there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the show and it answered some of your incubator questions so you can have the most success with your future production. You guys know that we're all about community here. We read all your comments, messages, and we can't thank you enough for it. We have a new way for you guys to get in touch with us and tell us what you guys think. Just call 586-991-1086 and leave a voicemail. We may even use it in a future episode. Until next time, this has been Snake Bites.